Welcome back DIY car guys and car girls and today we're talking about the power valve. Power valve, power valve, power valve. Now this guy right here, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is the most ununderstood part of your carburetor. A lot of guys say, hey, Holly has a procedure, you follow that procedure and it gives you the correct power valve. I'm going to tell you guys how many times that procedure has worked for me in my case. Zero. The reason why, there's just too many variables that go along with choosing that power valve. So I would only take that procedure as finding the general ballpark of a power valve. And the only way to correctly identify your power valve for your vehicle and your motor is with this guy right here. So today, I'm going to teach you guys everything that I know about the old power valve. And believe me, you don't know it. Some of you guys might, a lot of you guys don't. So that's what we're talking about today. All right, before I get further into the video, I want to let you guys know, I don't consider myself to be a guru, a uber expert on carburetors, but I do have a really good understanding about them, how they work, what does what. There is still a lot of things about the carburetor, like the metering blocks and the restrictions, the jet restrictions that go into your idle and your main wells, that I don't really know how that affects everything else. And I do know that those restrictions are very specific to your combination. So that part I'm not super knowledgeable about, but I would love to learn more of that in the future and share with you guys that knowledge later on down the line. But I do have a very good understanding about the power valve because of the wide band, I can see exactly what it does. And today that's exactly what I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to change the power valve and you can see the effects on the wide band to know exactly what I'm talking about. And a lot of that stuff right here just, you just have to have experience. I mean, like I said, you can explain something to your blue in the face, but until you have experience with it and you see what it does and you've gone through all the headache of figuring things out, really just takes experience. But hopefully this video will point you in the right direction. Also, before I get any further in the video, uh, the reason why I say Holly's procedure for finding correct power valve is easy to find. They say that's how you do it. It only gets you in the ballpark because there is too many combinations. Intake, plenum volume, compression, cam, gearing ratio, displacement of your motor, all plays an effect on how that power valve is going to work for your vehicle. And it's also something that you have to test while you're driving. And today, all my tests for the power valve is going to be while I am driving. And that's very important. You have to drive your vehicle with the power valve to see if it's functioning correctly. Okay, so to the power valves. Here we have a 2.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5, 9.5, 10.5, 11.5, 12.5, 13.5, 14.5, 15.5, 16.5, 5.5. Uh, these correspond to inches of vacuum. So this one will give you enrichment at 2.5, 4.5, and all of the above. People say like, well, well, Holly says you put your vacuum gauge on there and put it in gear. Uh, that, trust me, uh, when you're driving, your vacuum's a lot different. Your gears, whatever, where you cruise at is gonna change how these power valves work in your motor. That's why you have to drive it. So to show you guys the uh, effects that the power valve has on your setup, I'm going to start with a 8.5. I'm not going to go down one because it's kind of like going down one power valve is the equivalent of going down kind of like, you know, one jet change. You're probably not going to see any difference. So I'm going to go from a 8.5, cut it in half to a 4.5, and you'll see very quickly how that affects your air fueling while cruising so we'll go ahead and put that in and then after i cruise and take some video of that then we'll put this guy in but before i want to explain how on this guy right here and how every motor is different and how if something works on one motor 
does not mean it's going to work on another motor. So a lot of guys will ask questions, you know, and they'll give you answers based off of their setup. Because remember, your setup is way different than their setup. A lot of stuff is just trial and error. So what I had to do on mine to get my air fuel down while I was driving, this might not be the best method, the preferred method, but this method worked on mine because in here, you can see all these block offs. These are different size restrictors. This is your main well. This is your idle circuit. It's mirrored on both sides. This will affect your fuel curve here. Also on the very top of your carburetor, you have air bleeds. That will also affect your fuel curve. And this is the part that I'm not quite familiar with. And also, oops, I just dropped one. And also this, even like top name, you know, tuner places, We'll give you recommendations about this and it's something they're just throwing it out but you really have to try this and watch it on your wideband to get an idea of how these guys are affecting for your particular setup and that's why i'm saying a lot of this is just trial and error and it just takes a while to get it right so on mine see these guys right here where the power valve goes in the power valve goes in this guy right here and you have your jets on this other side that's your main enrichment, your main jets, and also your power valve feeds enrichment. Now, the whole purpose of this power valve is to let you cruise down the street with smaller jets in your mains, so that way you're not loading your motor up, having like, you know, 11.5 or whatever air fuel going down the road. It allows you to cruise at around, you know, a 13 to 14, 14.5 AFR, get better gas mileage, and not load up your motor and pallet your plugs. So what, one problem I had with this guy right here is that no matter what power valve I put in it, it was doing very little to affect my cruise. Uh, the best I could get it was around like 12.0 to 11.5, but no matter what I use here or there, it had very little effect. Like I said, this fix might not have been perfect, but it worked for me. I drilled out these jets right here. They're actually called re, um, power valve restrictors. And you can open these up and the bigger these holes are, the more enrichment it gives you whenever the power valve reaches a particular vacuum and gives you that enrichment. And that's what these numbers are. So basically look at the numbers like this. The lower the number, the later the enrichment will happen. The higher the number, the sooner the enrichment will happen. So that's why I say don't go by Holly's procedure. You really have to see how it acts on your wide band. So I basically just drilled these guys out and then I was able to go six sizes smaller on the jets at cruise and it got my air fuel at a very reasonable air fuel. It wasn't loading up going down the highway and it worked for me. Like I said, that might not be the best method, but that's worked for my setup. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put this, what am I going to put in there? I think I dropped the 8.5. Well, yeah, is this the 8.5? Let's see here. I'm gonna put in something I know is not gonna be right. Yep, that's a 6.5. So I, what I'm gonna do, let me find the 8.5, I'm gonna put it in there, and we're gonna take a cruise down the road, and then we'll record the wide band, and then I'm gonna put a 4.5 in, and you will clearly see the difference in cruising. All right, there we go, see it? 8.5. This is probably gonna be really fat all the time. So we're gonna put this in and go for a quick little drive. Now what I want you to pay attention to right here is the wide band. Coming to the stop sign, I'm gonna hit the gas and watch how fat it goes. Boom, it gave me like full enrichment down there to tens. You can't really hear it on camera and you can see every time I give it gas, it's way too much enrichment for this part throttle cruise. I'm off the gas, see it's in the 14s. Right when I hit the throttle, it goes back into the 11s and 12s. And really for cruise, that's way too much enrichment. You'll see every time that I let off the gas, back up, back in the idle circuit, 14s. And if I hit the gas, coming up right here, boom, way back down there to the 12s. And like I said, I like it to be in the 13s to 14s at cruise conditions at light throttle. When you hit it real hard, it needs to go to the 12s, but not conditions like this. I'm gonna give it some more gas, and as you can see, it's definitely way too fat. 
not only that but you can't really hear it on camera i can hear it the motor just is not happy let's change this out okay so the 8.5 is out and we now have a 4.5 in there now my change is pretty drastic going from 8.5 to 4.5 it may be a, even a little more drastic than what you see on yours if you're playing around with this, only because I have modified my metering block. And that 4.5 is probably more along the lines of a cam like mine that has, my cam and that 400 has 270 degrees of duration. So it has a uh, pretty good, pretty good amount. And that's at 50. But the LT1 wanted a 7.5 and it had a, a cam with 260 degrees of duration. So depending on your setup, these power valves definitely have to change. And like I said, it's just trial and error. All right, so come up on the same stop sign as last time. Remember how it pegged, almost pegged 10? Watch it this time. Watch how much leaner it is. Oh, yes. And this time the motor is not making that kind of like gurgly sound that it was before. Before it was making kind of a, a constant gurgly sound. You can just tell it was not very happy. So keeping it way leaner at cruise and this light throttle conditions is just going to make your motor way more happy. You'll get better gas mileage, won't foul out plugs. And that is the beauty of the old power valve. Most of the time it'll sit around here in the 14s and the 13s, but you know, it'll get a little fatter when I give it some gas. But that's okay. It's not going way down there in the 10s, not in the 11s. So I'm going to say this is probably good enough for now. I might want to mess with this a little bit in the future. So let's go out on the road real quick, make a quick rip, and you'll see at wide open throttle, it'll be where it needs to be. Whew, I'll tell you what, for a little street truck, this thing is sure fun to drive. And if you notice that it did go a little fat when I first stabbed at it, that's the accelerator pumps. I have a video on that. I'm still tuning it out, but we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Welp, that's pretty much it for today, fellas. The old power valve. Hopefully this video can lead you in the right direction. And remember, like I said, every vehicle is different, so you just have to play with the combinations to get it right for your setup. But until next time, keep on wrenching and peace.